So now the paleo diet, the, the idea behind the paleo diet is this. If you're religious, you know, it's independent of that. The idea is humans evolved over two to three million years. All they had for these two or three million years was, was that sentence, right? Meat and veggies, nuts and seeds. The agricultural revolution started something like around here. So where bread, pasta, rice, grains, potatoes were introduced into the diet. Very what's called high glycemic carbohydrates. And the idea is our body is not adapted to eat these things. Jacks up our insulin levels, jacks up our blood sugar, and keeping them jacked up over time stores, stores a, lot of, uh, a lot of insulin in the bloodstream, a lot of storage going on. And because there's lots of insulin and therefore lots of storage and not a lot of things getting released, that's why you feel sleepy after a huge pasta meal because you've got a lot of stuff going on but there's no energy roaming around even though it's just in your body, it's locked up. So how to get this into balance? I'll talk about that in a second. You know that on one end, you have the paleo diet and on another end, you've got so a word before I segue into this. A lot of the people here just, they just want to go to work, they want to come in and get a good workout and be healthy and not have disease, right? If that's your deal, then just stick with stick with this first sentence. It's eat meat, vegetables, nuts, and seeds, some food, little starch, no sugar. A lot of people here in this gym are just pure paleo people. They, they don't want to, they don't necessarily want to go into the zone hardcore because the zone itself is, is pretty, it's, it's pretty tough. So before I actually go into the zone, I want you, I want you to understand that the first part of the first part of our diet is the paleo diet. I want you to pay attention to what's what's on that list on the meat and vegetables thing, but I also want you to pay attention to what's not on there, right? What's what's not out? What's, what is what is outside of meat and vegetables, nuts and seeds, some fruit, no starch, no sugar, but like don't eat it, right? So, or uh, shop the perimeter of the grocery store. Like look at the perimeter of the grocery store and just kind of hang out there. Don't go into the aisles, and then that's that's also itself a generally safe rule. So now. Paleo zone, the zone. Because we look at things data based, data first, and it looks like this, right? We know, we know with, with, here, let's talk about some more definitions. These three things are, are bullseyes, right? Or playing darts, right? Bullseyes. And let's say I gave you 10 darts, and you shot all 10 darts. And you kind of, it went like this. This means that you are accurate, but not precise. If I gave you the 10 darts and you shot all 10 and it looked like this, all in the same spot, you are very precise, but not accurate. If I gave you the 10 darts and it looked like this, you are accurate and precise. So here's why that's important. We, because we're interested in increasing your fitness, we want to know exactly how to do this, exactly how, right? And because the metrics are such that it's by the foot pounds per minute, and it's judged by the stopwatch, accurate to the hundreds of a second, when we do workouts like Fran or the deadlift, I, we know exactly how many pounds you're moving, we know exactly how long you're moving it, and we know exactly how long it takes. And what we want to know is how long will it take for us to get you more pounds faster and more weight. Outside of the one hour that we have you in the gym, let's say, Jackson, I'm only using Jackson as an example because he has a very, comp he has a very consistent cohort. And cohort just means the guy next to you, right? So let's say you have, I know he comes in at Monday, Wednesday, Fridays, they have this special deal, it's like 1 p.m., right? So let's say this is, this is all you guys. If I took one of you, whether it's you or Todd one, to, and, I, and I had you pay attention to what you're eating, here's up is good. He'll just run away from the pack. Up is good. Run away, right? I know if someone comes into the gym and inside of several weeks maybe, they're lifting more weight than is usual, they're doing a lot more pull-ups, they're going a lot faster in wads, they're attacking it with this ferocity that was not there before, where wads didn't feel like death. They now feel like they're still hard, but it's more about dominance than survival. I know that there's something going on with their nutrition. It's a one-to-one -one correspondence between elite performance in the gym and accuracy and precision to the consumption. The zone gives us this. And here's an example. What, what did you deadlift for three reps the other day? 300. 300 pounds. He knows that, 
right? He knows that it was 300 pounds. But if I ask somebody, what did you what did you eat today? They'll be like, oh, well, I had two tacos, beer. I, I don't I don't have any data. I don't have anything. Right? But if someone said something like, I had 16 16 blocks with with three times the fat and such and such amount of fish oil. Now I now I know something. Now I know something about what they're eating. So that's where the zone comes in. This is just to start off with the zone. If you want to avoid metabolic disease, you got to eat meat, and vegetables, nuts and seeds, some food, little starch, no sugar. If you want, if you want this, if you want CrossFit bad, if you want, if you want this stuff bad, you got to weigh and measure your meat, and vegetables, nuts and seeds, some food, little starch, no sugar. Weigh and measure. That means measuring cups, measuring spoons, and a food scale, or you know the thing that measures ounces for meat. So here's how that, here's what that looks like. 